there. This is the hap, hap, happiest time of the year. <clears throat> and as a result, I thought it would be time for the greatest of all time video. Uh, I have therefore donned my smoking jacket. Even though I don't smoke. But I have tied my own bow tie. Now, I'm sitting next to my fireplace miraculously created through the miracles of modern technology and I have next to me ten pens. In fact, ten pens and a bonus pen. I will go over these ten pens. These are the ten pens that I have used most in 2022 and as always I think this video is a nice bit of eye candy maybe and this is a video well, I really give you some personal favorites, so it's my greatest of all time. But there's no mon blanc! That's okay, because this is a video detailing my personal favorite pens for 2022. But there's no pelican! That's okay, because this is a video detailing my favorite 10 pens for 2022. But there is no X Ransom! I don't care. This is a video detailing my 10 favorite pens of 2022. Okay. In no particular order, here's what's going to happen. I mean, this is in a particular order. I'm going to show you these 10 pens in no particular order and then I will write with them. As I write with them, I'll hold them up close to the camera so you can get a better look at them. But I hope you will forgive me that I will now first talk about the pens a little bit and why they made it on the list. Now you have to forgive me, this is the bit where I talk for quite a bit. All right, because the pens have personal meaning to me, so I'm assuming, that's the feedback I got in past years, that you like to hear that story. If you don't, there will be timestamps that show you the writing samples of every pen, which you might find more interesting, and I wouldn't hold it against you. I'm not going to make those timestamps though, but I know someone will. Number one. We have, and this is again in no particular order, here we have this lovely pen. It's Leonardo Momento Zero Grande. Uh, this is not the 2.0 because it does not have an ink window, but it does have the new section shape. Uh, this pen was sent to me by Limited Pens Korea. Uh, Turned Penco made this material. I think it is a stunning material which I will show you better uh, in the writing part of the video. I absolutely love it. I find myself inking up this pen a lot and what is particularly remarkable about it is that it actually has an extra fine nib. Now if you know me you know that an extra fine is not really my thing. It is however a flex nib or call it an elastic nib. Allows for a lot of nice line variation. I really really like writing with this pen and I find the new section very comfortable. Also this one can be disassembled with the uh, wrench that Leonardo sells. So that makes maintenance very easy. Beyond that, I find it beautiful. When you get a close-up of the pen, you'll see the material better and uh, you, you may really enjoy that. The second pen I have chosen uh, is this one. I reach for a lot. This is the Cross Peerless Darth Vader. Um, the Darth Vader, I think, is a very nice pen. It is not a secret that I like a bit of Star Wars. It's a metal pen. It's a peerless model. It has a nib made by Sailor. That means it should have a certain level of quality. The Sailor nibs are known to be very good. And I love this pen. One of the reasons I like it so much is that from a distance it looks just like a black pen. But once you get close, you see certain details that really relate the pen to Darth Vader. The first time I watched Star Wars, that was episode 4. Um, again, I'm, I'm, you have to forgive me a little bit of waffle in these kinds of videos. Uh, I, I was very young. I was not yet able to speak English, nor could I really read yet. And my dad had a videotaped copy that he recorded from TV, uh, from actually a Belgian TV station, uh, the, the channel, though there was subtitles in uh, Dutch and French, Belgium being a, a bilingual nation. I couldn't read the subtitles. I couldn't understand the English. 
I could just see the images. Interestingly enough, I read an interview with George Lucas who said he really would want people to watch the movies like that, not really focusing on the language spoken, but on the images. And that's what I had for A New Hope for the first time. And I distinctly remember the moment where first all the stormtroopers enter Princess Leia's ship and then Darth Vader enters. And as a kid, honestly, I was like, whoa, because Darth Vader, this, this big black ominous figure comes in with his armor and his cape and all that stuff. It blew me away. And this pen always reminds me of that little bit of youth sentiment. And beyond that, it's a fantastic writer. So you will see that later on. We have this pen, which I think <laughs> someone's going to check that now. I think this has been in my GOAT video since the beginning. Yardled Viceroy Grand in the Victorian finish. <gasps> oh no, sorry, just, just making. <laughs> uh, I made a joke. Okay, beautiful pen. Sterling silver. The pattern is hand hammered uh, in the UK. This pen was a gift from John many years ago. Um, I believe that was the end of 2013 or early 2014. I've had this pen in my possession since. Uh, he was a YouTube viewer. He sent me this pen. I absolutely love it. It has a broad nib that is fantastically smooth, a lovely writer, and paired with dark blue inks. I found this is an absolute winner. So I love this pen. The weight of the silver is really, really nice. And knowing that there is so much handwork in the pen to me makes it special. And then of course there's the fact that someone sent this to me, which is incredibly kind. Um, a lovely pen, and this is certainly a conversation piece I found you know, at work or those kinds of uh, situations. The fourth pen I've chosen is this one, the uh, Armando Simoni uh, Club, uh, now the pen family, Bologna Extra. This was the first pen uh, I believe ASC made. Um, it was shortly after they had procured all the Arco stock left in, well, not all the Arco stock left in the world, but the Arco stock that Omas had left when that company went bankrupt. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a beautiful pen. The Arco celluloid, it's the only Arco celluloid I have left. I sold two of the other ones. I didn't use them enough, and oddly enough, this one was my favorite. It's a very big pen. Uh, some people find it a little clunky, and I see that. I can certainly see it. It's just a big, big pen. It has a brass liner, though, which makes for a really nice weight, and it's just big. It has a cool filling system, and uh, it has a, their Magic Flex nib, which is a nib I find really pleasant to write with, and... Um, I just love this pen. It's a great size, it's a lovely writer, and paired with SBRE Brown, which is basically liquid Arco celluloid, uh, it, it's, it's a great pairing. I just, I just really love this pen. The only reason I don't use it too often is that it's very big, and it's not, it doesn't fit every pen case. Speaking of nice uh, pens, I mean, I've been doing that for, I think, like, what is it, 40 minutes at this point, but I'll just keep going like nothing happened. Uh, this is a pen that I absolutely love as well. It is a Magna Carta Elements Earth. Uh, Magna Carta is an Indian pen company. Uh, they send this pen to me to review. It actually has the same filling system as the Bologna Extra you just saw. This one too, I always have Esbiari Brown in it. Lovely pen, a steel nib and an ebonite feed. This goes to show that I really think a good steel nib is nothing to sneeze at. A lovely writer. I made it a bit wetter, I will say that, but it's very smooth, it's very pleasant to use. Nice filling system, and I just love this material. Again, you'll see it better up close when I write with it, uh, but it's, it's a beautiful material, I find, and this is a lovely size. It's certainly not a small pen, but it is not so big that it is obscenely oversized. Not that I would have any pens that are obscenely oversized. <laughs> Uh, here's an LB6. Um, <clears throat> classic pens, then relabeled Lambru pens. Forgive me. <clears throat> Something in my throat. Uh, this is their LB6. So this is the faceted model. I don't know how well you can see the facets, but there are facets. You may be able to see it better when I tilt the camera down later. Beautiful pen, handmade by the late Paul Rossi, who was a, uh, a wonderful artist. Um, 
I think this is a, an absolutely lovely piece uh, that I really, really enjoy using. Uh, it's, a, it's certainly a larger pen, uh, uh, good size and, and quite girthy. And, uh, and, 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 and that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, the diffusion bonded acrylic, the red, is, is one of my absolute favorite pen materials. It has so much depth to it. And it is such an intense red. Uh, I, I really, really like it. So that's, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's one of my favorites. You will see I've done a special thing with the nib when I write with it, but we're not quite there yet. Um, next, speaking of having done things to nibs, funny that the order ended up this way. Here we have a special pen. It's a, it's a Conid king size, but it's no longer completely Conid. Uh, this, through the interventions of my friend Wacko Jacko, the miracle of Calgary, uh, this pen now has a number 8 Danny Trio nib on it, so there is a little bit of discussion that I started online on whether this is now called a Kona Trio or a Danid. Feel free to weigh in on the discussion. In any case, you have that, that beautiful number 8 uh, uh, Danny Trio nib, uh, which, which is a Bock nib, on the conid, which also uses Bock nibs. It's just that extricating the nib and feed uh, from a Danny Trio was a little bit of work because they're kind of captured not in a traditional nib collar but a little metal ring. So Jack had a very uh, scary looking pair of pliers uh, that he took to this. Anyway, uh, it, it writes wonderfully. This is a nib tuned by Mike Masayama and it's a, it's a stub, uh, so 18 karat. Um, Danny Trio stub tuned by Mike Masayama. This is a dream to write with. Uh, the thing is, I love that Danny Trio too, but it's quite big and bulbous. It doesn't fit in a lot of pen cases. So as a result, um, I wanted to put that nib in a pen that I can carry around more easily. And this is it. Cool filling system too. So I, I absolutely love using this. Here is uh, a pen that I've uh, obtained fairly recently. Uh, this is an Edison and this is a Collier or Collier Grande. Uh, this is the uh, Tortoise Lucite, which I think is a beautiful material. It's, it's uh, very translucent, which makes it very fun to use. This has the draw filler, uh, which is a bit of an upgrade. Um, I mean, you, you pay extra for that, otherwise it's a cartridge converter filled pen or eyedropper, but this, you know, this is how the cookie crumbled for me. Uh, and it has a number 8 nib. Now this is very much like a Collier, except it's the Collier Grande. So it's bigger than the regular Collier, which is already not a small pen. It's a little girthier. Uh, there are pictures online where Brian Gray compares the two. and. Um, it's a lovely pen. He, he sent me two to review this and one in this material and one in the persimmon swirl, which I also think is a beautiful material, but I really fell in love with this. It's, I, I, I just love this material. It has a lot of nice patterning to it, which just I think makes it very, very attractive. Uh, so I, I, really, uh, I, I really love that. Also, the, the, the slightly bigger size I found is very comfortable, very pleasant to use, uh, and it has a number 8 nib actually made by Magna Carta. So the maker of this pen creates these number 8 nibs, is now selling them to other companies. You get a number 8 steel nib uh, with an ebonite feed, and I have to say, out of the box, the two Edisons wrote beautifully. So that's very, very nice. I wanted to show you another pen, but I forgot to take it out, and it's right there. So you're going to have to excuse me for one second, and I never edit this stuff. So... Look, this is a Classic Pens LB7. Uh, this is a prototype uh, that I, I happened to obtain uh, on, on eBay. Uh, handmade entirely by Paul Rossi, uh, the same Paul Rossi of the LB6, for example, has diffusion bonded acrylic here and there, and then it has a Blue Lagoon material there, which I think is very attractive. Uh, everything, the, 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 the band, the clip, Paul Rossi made by hand. Uh, he was a jeweler by trade. And then you have this pen, 
a lovely pen. It looks unassuming. It looks a bit like, like maybe a pocket dual fold or something. Except that's an entirely machine-made pen. This is an entirely hand-carved pen. Uh, this was a prototype for the LB7s, and the LB7 line never went into production. Uh, so when I came across this, I thought it might be fun to have this. Also, Paul Rossi has passed away, uh, and I think it's, uh, it's a nice tribute. That, that man did really, really beautiful things with pens, and that it's an, that it's an artist proof, I think, is, is pretty cool. You probably can't read this, but there is a little AP etched into the uh, end cap for artist proof. Okay, that was 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. That was number 9. Number 10 comes in a special case. You knew this had to be on there, didn't you? What man doesn't want to say his pen is 8 inches? Mine is. Um, it's a rather large pen. Yeah, rather large pen. Um, I sound more like the professor every day. Rather large pen, you know? <laughs> um, Conway Stewart Great Exhibition. I saw this uh, for the first time in 2012. No, no. 2017, sorry. Uh, at the uh, DC Pen Show. And um, uh, a very kind gentleman had one. I, I couldn't afford one at the time. I just moved to Canada. Uh, but I absolutely loved it. So this is a, a massive pen. It's an eyedropper filled pen. If you, you, you may as well just pour a bottle of ink into it because eyedroppering takes forever. A huge pen. And Henry Simple, also sadly passed away, uh, is the... Um, uh, silversmith who created the overlay by hand. He's done some really cool things. Um, for example, if you have to look around a little bit, but you can actually find a C, uh, like here, for example, there is a, a, a C in it, can't waste you. There's also an S, so it's kind of carefully wrought into it, uh, which I, I thought is very, very nice. Uh, this is obviously not a pen that you carry around every day. Uh, it is huge. And for those of you who wish to know, uh, yes, it does post. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. Now, I understand there, was, there are 50 of these. Uh, there also, supposedly, is a Vermeil version. So silver with uh, gold on top. I have never seen those anywhere. If anyone has ever seen one, please leave a comment, because I'm not sure if those ever went into production or not. Uh, the pen itself, handmade by Henry Simpol as well, which I think is very nice. So this is another tribute to a great artist, and I absolutely love it. Even though this is not something you use every day, I mean, you don't care, it's heavy, it's, it's huge. This certainly starts a conversation, and it's just a fantastically made pen that also writes lovely. And that is a number eight nib. You wouldn't say that because it looks like a number six nib, but that's because the pen is so huge, to put things in rather a harsh perspective. Okay, now I promise you a bonus pen. Yes, I've covered my ten pens. Let's look at the bonus, shall we? It is this pen. The Majon Q1. Uh, I got it, and it was not functional. See the review of this pen, which will come out at some point, and you will understand that the pen barely wrote when I got it. It also comes with a little eyedropper, because obviously this is an eyedropper-filled pen, and I can tell you that eyedropper barely functioned as well. So for $20, you basically buy a box. Having said that, I thought, I think I can make this pen write. I made the nib a little wetter, and now it actually writes really pleasantly. It's a strange pen, because its proportions are weird. It's, it's based on a Tombow pen, um, the Tombow Egg, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which was kind of designed as a pen to help people with arthritis. Now, it's not exactly the same pen, but it, it is certainly inspired by, let's put it that way. Uh, you post it, and then you have this very chunky pen. Again, people with arthritis meant to help them out. Uh, a nice little number six nib, uh, a, a simple plastic feed, and it's not something I would use for long writing sessions, but now that I've made it wetter, I've actually found myself inking up this pen quite a lot. So then I thought to myself, if I do that, and my purpose in the GOAT video is to show you pens that I use a lot, 
and have used a lot in the past year, well, this one should be in there. So there you go. 10 plus 1. Bonus. If you order now, you can get all of these pens for just $20,000. Decide quickly. Um, I will now move to that side where my desk is and I shall do a writing sample of all these pens. I'm sorry if I already have taken up so much of your time, but this is a video for a special type of person and if you're still watching, you're one of those people. I say this non-judgmentally, I appreciate you very, very much. So let's write with the pens and then I'll give you my final end of year thoughts. Let's get started. Okay, so here we go. I can tell you that dinner jacket, sorry, smoking jacket was not cool. It was overheating me. Anyway, here we go with these pens. So a quick, a quick twirly twirl. Uh, and then uh, I'll do some writing. I think this this is really is a beautiful pen. Uh, there's a nice sort of glittery speckle in the material which you might be able to see. It's it's I just I just love it. All right. So here we have this Leonardo Momento Zero Grande. Um, very nice. Uh, I, th I, I am now completely blanking on the model name. I thought it was something with oceans or seas. I'm sorry, it's, it's exclusive to Limited Pens Korea. And you might be able to find one, although there were only 37, I want to say. Yes, 37 of these. Okay, the ink is what used to be Waterman South Sea Blue, um, which now has another name but it's something with turquoise. Uh, it's basically their turquoise, the only turquoise they really make, so you should be able to find it pretty quickly. Uh, and this is an extra fine nib. There is certainly feedback, given that it is so fine. Um, but then there is the advantage um, that you can do that sort of thing with it because it's also an elastic nib and it has an ebonite feed which is very pleasant and it can post if you really want it to but I don't really want it to lovely lovely material though I really really like it it's um, just the swirls in this are, are absolutely beautiful and it always for some reason me it, it always reminds me not so much of oceans of the sea but when you fly over mountains and you see these sort of dark blue or emerald colored lakes uh, I know emerald is not a blue but you get the point and then you have these the mountains with the snow caps and etc that's what it reminds me of now speaking of something completely different um, cross Star Wars Darth Vader a peerless model uh, this is uh, the uh, Platinum Carbon. I don't find myself using a lot of black ink. I personally find it a little boring, but in this pen, a black ink works very, very well. Uh, and this is a medium nib. And with this being a... Um, Sailor nib. It's incredibly pleasant to use. I really found this very, very nice. And that's why I like it. It's also fine enough to use at work without having, you know, a quadruple broad, super broad nib. Darth Vader's chest panel. There's other detail on it. You can watch my full review on all these pens, obviously. Darth Vader's face, uh, the helmet, the mask is, is on the cap. Um, this is part of his boots, and, and there is the Imperial logo, there is a red crystal for his lightsaber. Like, there's a lot of cool detail like that, but again, from a distance it just looks like a black pen, and I, I really like that. It, it, it's a bit downplayed, which I think, especially in a, in a business setting, for example, is, is kind of nice. Okay, then we have the wonderful Conway Stewart, sorry, not Conway Stewart, the wonderful Yard of Lead, uh, Viceroy Grand. 
wonderful pen. I don't know what that is either. Uh, Yard of Lead. Dark blues, uh, washable blues, I find work very well in this pen. I, I, I don't know why, but I do. Uh, Viceroy Grand. This is a broad nib, and the ink is actually Laban Blue, which I'm almost out of, and I think I should pick up a bit more of. I think it's a very, very nice uh, dark blue. It is a washable blue, I believe, uh, but, but very nice. Notice that little skip there, which is about to say this is a lovely nib. Never skips, but did there. Um, great pen. Absolutely lovely to use, certainly on the heavier end of things, but I don't find it too heavy to use. And this is the Grand. There also is a standard and a pocket if you look for this pattern, but you want it a little bit smaller and lighter. That's, that's uh, certainly something they can accommodate. Okay, what else? The Armando Simoni Club Bologna Extra in the uh, Arco bronze material that, that people love. It's, it's hard to n not love it. I mean, I know there are people that are left more or less indifferent to it. I find it a very pleasant material. Uh, I like the, the gold, the, the, the rose gold uh, trims on this pen to me work very well with the Arco. And again, it's, it's a bigger pen and with the brass in it, it certainly feels like a, a heavier pen, has some weight to it. We have the ASC Bologna Extra with their 18K Magic Flex. And the ink is SBRA Brown. I, f I found that that's a very good combination uh, for this pen. And I will say, once I found a certain ink that works well with a pen, I tend to be fairly... Uh, uh, loyal, I suppose, to it, and I just keep using it. It's a lovely writer. I would I would call this a nice uh, medium nib size without uh, any pressure. But if you do exert a bit of pressure, um, you can certainly get out quite a bit of line variation. Not nearly as much as with this Leonardo. But you can get out some line variation. Enough for me to make everyday writing fun and a bit engaging. Uh, and you can more or less make the material line up, by the way. It's just... Um, it's no, Nobody said it was going to be easy. But it can, it can more or less line up a little better than that. Anyway, I don't want to keep you here all day. Um, we have the Magna Carta elements. Same filling system. Pneumatic filling system as the uh, uh, ASC pen. And a uh, lovely pen. This is another very nice pen, which, if I remember correctly, does not... You know, it sort of posts, but I, it's, it's a little wobbly, and I, I don't think it really needs to post. It's big enough. And this pen, this very simple section, just tapers down. There's nothing else to it. I found that very pleasant to use. Um, this is a broad nib. I certainly don't find it the broadest of nibs I have ever used. Um, but having said that, it's a very nice nib. It's a very pleasant writer. I did say I made it a bit wetter. It was pretty dry when I got it, but that was an easy job. Uh, and now it writes exactly how I want it to write. Nice, uh, good ink capacity, and with an ebonite feed, uh, very, very pleasant to use. Very good, consistent ink flow no issues. And I like this because it's a very attractive material, but it's not too ostentatious to use in a professional setting. Unlike some of the other pens coming up. <laughs> uh, okay, let's turn the page. It's almost a new year after all. Okay, here we have the Lambru pens LB6 faceted and being having a window right there. It captures the light quite nicely. You can certainly see that it's actually faceted. These also came as a round version, completely rounded off, and they came with gold trim. 
Andy Lambrou recommended um, before he disappeared to use silver trim on this. He said Paul Rossi would recommend that to make the material shine and I will say I think it's a very nice choice. The clip is handmade uh, by Paul Rossi. Uh, these is uh, uh, the, the LB6s are all uh, based on virtues. This one is passion and it has flames on the clip. Again, all handmade, handmade center band. This ring is handmade. So there's a lot going on. And of course, it's signed Paul Rossi. It's also signed Paul Rossi. It's hard to show you, but on the inside of the clip, where it also has the um, A25 Sterling Silver hallmark. And this is number six of 10, which I think is kind of fun. LB6, number six of 10. Now, I said I'd done something with the nib. It came with a, it's a number eight nib. Allow me a sip of tea. It's a number eight Bach nib. Uh, mine came with a medium. I think they were only delivered with mediums, but it really wrote like a fine. And given that this is a bigger pen, I was looking for something a little bolder. And the advantage of number eight Bach nibs is that you can get other Bach nibs. And then I realized I already had another number eight Bach nib, and it's a Conid nib. Uh, so this is the same, like it matches the trim of the pen. Uh, and now I have a double broad on it which I think if you compare it to what I had in the review, I like this a lot better. So here we have a Lambrou Pens LB6 uh, nib corrected, double broad 14K, and this is a Mont Blanc Corn Poppy Red, uh, which I think is a very nice match to the material of the pen. Do you not? I thought so. Okay. Lovely pen and a lot bolder than the very fine medium it came with, which is also a nice nib. Mike Masayama tuned that, so I mean, that, that is a very pleasant writer. It's just very fine for such a big pen. And for, to, to me, that, that was a... I don't know, I, I, I didn't really like that. So this, this helped a lot for me. And that material, that's, that's something. Okay. Six down, there's only a couple more to go. Let's start off with this one, which I think had a little bit of ink on the section, so forgive me as I quickly wipe that down and let me make sure there is some ink in the actual chamber. There we go. So here we go with this uh, Conid King Size Bulk Filler. Uh, this is a lovely pen to me. I really, really like it. As you can see, there isn't much ink in it. Thank you to the kind gentleman who donated some of his purple uh, Pelican ink in the hub last night. Uh, it's your ink, so you're now officially an SBR Brown video. Um, <laughs> and of course, again, what makes it special is the Danny Trio nib, uh, because these number eight nibs Danny Trio did, I think are some of the prettiest nib imprints around. I really, really love it. Stub nib, 18K, tuned by Mike Masayama. Looks slightly misaligned there um, on the feed, but that's okay. I'm sure it's going to work. Let's see if there is iron in my words. So here we have the Kona Trio. This is a an 18K stub, which is so incredibly smooth. It's so lovely to use. Uh, and then there is that Pelican Purple. Okay, now. I'm just speechless because it's, it's such an exceptional nib. So having this on this pen I think is extra fun. It just makes it extra fun to me to use because I love the nib and as I said I didn't really have a pen have it on a pen that I could take to work more easily, or very easily, and, and this I can. It's, this is the same size as a Mont Blanc 149, so it's, it's, a, it's a, certainly a larger pen, but it's, it's, uh, it can be wielded very easily. Um, I love it. I think this is a fantastic combination. I'm very happy, so uh, Wacko Jacko has done it again. Okay, moving on, because we still have four pens to go. I don't want to keep you here all day. There won't be a 20-hour video. We have that Collier Edison 
no, not Edison Grande, what the hell? The Edison Collier Grande. This Collier, I think, is very, very nice. I hope you will appreciate the material. I try to make it capture the light a bit. Translucent, you can see how much ink is left, which I think is quite nice. And then it has this number eight, eight Magna Carta nib. So we have here the Edison Collier Grande with a broad nib and SBRE brown ink again. Once you have a perfect ink, you don't have to change it. <laughs> uh, okay. It's a lovely pen. Uh, one of the few with a steel nib in the lineup. That is not snobbism. Uh, it's just that the pens that I love most tend to have gold nibs. Uh, but again, this shows once more that there is really nothing wrong with a good steel nib. Very pleasant writer. Um, even has a little bit of bounciness to it, although it's not a, um, a uh, flex nib, so do, do be very careful with it. Lovely writer, and these, these don't post. They're, they're meant to not be posted, uh, and it's, it's certainly a, a large enough pen to use unposted, I would say. Lovely, lovely material. Uh, some of these things you see on the inside look like ink drops, but they're actually part of the material, which is somewhat confusing. That, for example, that is an ink drop, but then this, I know, is just part of the material. Whoa, I know. Okay, moving on. Here we have the LB7 Artist Proof. Uh, nice pen. I find this to be a, uh, a very pleasant writer. So uh, this would be a classic pens or Lambrou pens. LB7 Artist Proof. Uh, this is just a medium nib in 18K. It does have the... Uh, a classic pens logo on it and this is the the very very nice uh, dark blue Leonardo ink uh, which I am running low on I should buy a bottle of this because I love this color I, I think it's a very very nice uh, color well shaded uh, has a bit of red sheen to it as well I'm not a huge lover of sheen uh, but I will say I, I just love this this shade of blue it's very nicely shaded to begin with uh, and it's a nice dark blue um, not i'm not sure it's quite a blue black i just really love it wonderful pen not too big not too small i think this is a, a pen size that works for a lot of people i've let a couple of people try it out in the calgary pen club and they were all quite uh, enamored with it because it's such a nice size and this material if I remember correctly, Paul Ross, I think he even airbrushes this or something like that. There was a, a fancy, um, not the diffusion bonded acrylic, but this material. Uh, it Blue Lagoon is well chosen because it does look like swirling water. Very, very nice pen. One that I, I really, really enjoy using. Okay. Uh, then we have this, which won't fit. Let me zoom out a bit. Uh, it's big. It's big. It's an 8-inch pen. Uh, Leonardo Momento Zero is not a small pen. Um, a uh, Amanda Simone Club is not a small pen, but none of them are as big as this pen. Uh, the silver overlay work is is absolutely beautiful. I I I dearly love it. Eyedropper filled pen, uh, so all of this is ink. Uh, you will not run out of ink anytime soon. Uh, and this one has a medium 18k nib and as I said it is number eight if you don't believe it because it it looks like it is not number eight this is a number six so it really is a number eight nib it's just such a huge pen it doesn't look like number eight anyway remarkably comfortable big section hourglass shaped very comfortable to hold maybe not if you have smaller hands uh, but I've given this to a couple of people to try out as well. Everybody seemed to quite like it. Although the word baseball bat was used. Okay. A very smooth nib. Sorry. Uh, I am... My hand is resting on this spiral and that makes it a little hard to write. Uh, we have a medium, that's my excuse anyway. And the ink is Conway Stewart Blue. I think um, 
that's a 30 milliliter bottle and in five inkings of this pen that will be empty yeah do 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 the math i think it was actually described as, as eight milliliter capacity i should really measure it at some point i haven't really done it in any case a lovely writer very smooth but not skipping though So really, really nice Ebonite Fee 2. Uh, um, I, I absolutely love it. Really, really nice pen. And um, yeah, this is, like I said, it's a conversation piece, right? Okay, zooming in a little bit for that final pen. This was the 10 plus 1. Here we go with the Mahjong Q1. It's something. It's something. And now that it writes, uh, all the better posts a little bit of force and then it is securely posted here we have the Mahjong Q1 with <coughs> sorry Schaefer Scrip Red and this is just their um, extra fine nib which I made it a little wetter spread the tines a little bit I think it's a, a good fine now it's not the smoothest nib I've ever used, but it has a pretty nice amount of feedback. Uh, it's not scratchy. It's quite fine. And it's kind of fun to use now that it writes as I would want it to write, which is, it writes. <laughs> this is what we have. So, there you have it. A, another four hour long SBRE Brown video. Thank you for sticking with me till the end. Uh, I hope this was fun, that it was at least a bit of eye candy. I thank you so much for your viewership in the past year. It means a lot to me. All the kind words that people sent my way are really, really appreciated. Uh, I, I really can't emphasize that enough. It, it really means a lot to me. And I hope you will continue to watch my inane ramblings in 2023. I can't believe we're 23 years into this new millennium already, but we are. So stay safe, take care, have fun at the end of the year, and uh, I'll see you next year.